Hello, and thank you again for joining me on Ladies in Tech. Before you go, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hello, and welcome Ladies in Tech. This video is going to be on the timer on function instruction in Iris Logics 500. So the system that I've hooked up today to demonstrate this, I have a little Micrologix 1100 PLC, and I have some push buttons and some lights. So our green one there is a normally open push button, and the black one is our normally closed. And currently you can see it has a program on right now. You can see that red light's on. And we're going to communicate with this PLC using uh, Ethernet, which is hooked up to the back of my laptop. One other thing I want to show you here is that we already have an um, Ethernet IP address. And there we go, we're 198, 198, 198, 16. So that's what we can use to communicate with this guy. So I'm going to jump over to our Logix 500 now and put the instruction for the uh, timer on delay. All right, I'm going to go to my RS Logix 500 because that is what a Micrologix 1100, that's the PLC we're using, uses to program it. So I'm going to open up my RS Logix 500. And open this up and what we'll do, we'll start right off from scratch. We're going to start a new project. So we can either go File, New, or we can go File like this for New as well, just like in Word. And we're going to select our controller. And this here is a Micrologix 1100 right here, and it's a Series B. And that's the one we want to choose. So that there automatically downloaded um, the preloaded instruction sets and everything that's associated with that controller. And since this controller is a uh, fixed controller, right, it's not a modular, it's a fixed, all the I.O. is already comes in one little box, right? So we don't have to add all our I.O. So if we go here and we go to look at our outputs, we can see the outputs that we can choose as well in our inputs. The data tables are already there for them. We go to I.O. configuration. You can see here we have a Micrologix 1100 Series B. So that is the main unit. And if we did have some additional I.O. that we wanted to connect to it, we can add it on there. So let's look at this program here we want to write. I want to show you how to make timers or how to use your timer instruction. So right here under this tab, these are all our instructions and each of these tabs have different instructions that you can use. And this is where our timers slash counters and associated associated commands or instructions are found. So here's where we're going to write our ladder logic. One thing, we can never write a new or never write any logic on the end rung. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is add a rung, which is right here under user, new rung. We're going to put it in there and we'll go over to our timers and counters. So we have some different timers that we can use. We have a timer on delay and a timer off delay. So I'm going to put my on delay in here and you can see right away the timer goes at the end of the instruction like an output. And here in front you can put an instruction of when you want it to time and when you don't want it to time. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to address one of my push buttons. I'm going to address my normally open green push button that's over there. So I'm going to go back to my user and um, this is my examinative close. So in its normal position, that normally open push button will not allow logic to go through here. So in order to have the logic to go through, you have to push the push button. So I'm going to address that right now. And it's an input, so I colon. And you can see this starts bringing up the inputs. And I know that that input for that green push button is located at... Um, on the base unit and it's located at input one. Okay, and here it's going to give me, wants me to put in a description. So we're going to put that description in now. I'm going to say green um, push button and I'm going to also say end 
O. So that to me is normally open and most people, uh, everybody in the industry will know it's normally open. And it's, this is good to know so they can know, expect when that signal is going to be there or not to be there. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my green PB push button. And that acronym is quite widely used as well. I'm going to go, okay. If I do this check mark right here, you can see right here, boom, this BUL.1763, that is the part number for the PLC. So right there, it tells me that I addressed it correctly to my PLC. If I didn't have that part number come up, um, it would, it, I, I would know that I did not address it correctly to that location. And we got errors down here, which is going to be about my timer. So let's get to putting some addresses in this timer. So this is a timer on instruction, timer on delay. You always have to give a timer a name. A timer with Micrologix 500 for these controllers, the memory storage location for timers are always T4. Okay, and each one needs a, a name. So we're gonna give this one, we're gonna call it T4. It always starts with T4, colon, oops, sorry about that. Uh, T4 colon and I'm going to call this zero. So T40 is this timer and I can also give it a name as well um, that I can relate to it. I'm going to call it a um, timer five seconds. We're going to go okay. Now it wants us to tell it what type of time base. So I'm going to count in seconds. If I didn't want to count in seconds, if I get more refined and go tenths of a second and then in milliseconds as well. I'm gonna put a preset in here and we'll do just three seconds so it happens quickly, don't have to wait long. So now I'm gonna put another rung of logic in here and I'm gonna use one of the bits from the timer to turn on a light. So I'm gonna use the done bit. So when this timer is done, so that's when the preset meets the accumulative and the accumulative is the actual value that the timer has counted to. Right, so I have to address that by going T4 colon zero because that is the timer we're using because we're going to have multiple timers in our program and it's going to be slash DM. And you can see the name is the same name up here. So we know we've addressed that correctly and I'm going to put an output in and here's the output I'm going to use and I'm going to address it to one of the lights that I have over here. So I'm going to go light. I can't remember which one I put to which side so we're just going to go, um, we're going to go light one and we'll call it green or red next time we download it. And I'm actually going to, sorry, let's go to our output. Let's put our output in here first because it's going, well, what's light one? So we got to tell it what light one's going to be. Um, so we're going to go output zero slash zero. Okay. And let's do our check again and make sure that we're going to the right spot and we're good. So let's take this program and we're going to download it. So let's go to our IO configuration. Well, that was good. What I actually want you to go to is your channel configuration. Channel one, we can see here we have our boot P on. We don't wanna do that because we actually have an IP address already on our controller. So I'm gonna set that IP address right now. Configuration, channel one, we can see here we have- I suggest that you look it up so you can see how to do it. IP address set, we're gonna go okay. Now I can either, I'm gonna go on here and I do my systems com. And we're gonna select the PLC that we wanna to download to. You can see all the other ones X out. Um, that's cache memory. So we're just gonna download now. We're gonna give it a name. We're gonna go timer tutorial. And I'm just gonna save it on my desktop. I might as well put the date there too. Today was what, February 14th. And we're gonna save that. Now I'm going to download. It's asking me, do you wanna download the program for this one to go to another Micrologix 1100 Series B? We're gonna go yes. Right now it's telling me that the processor is in a remote run. We're just gonna switch it to program. Do you wanna continue? Yes. And you wanna go back and run mode? We're gonna go yes. Okay, here we go, we're online. You can see it's green on either side of the rung. That tells me we're up and going. And what I'm gonna do now is push that green uh, push button. 
And you can see here, I'm holding it down. The timer is accumulating and the light comes on. When I let go, the timer done is no longer done and this light comes off. So I'll show you that one more time. And I'll also show you on the right, physical device as well. and now I changed the bit that I'm using from that timer to our enable bit that we can use on that timer on instruction. So I'll let you see how that reacts. When I press the green button, the enable bit is green. And you can see the bit here is green and the light's on. And you can see that the timer is done and it's still on. So that timer uh, T4 colon zero enable will always be true as long as the logic that is in front of the timer is true. All right, so now I'm gonna change the instruction altogether. I'm gonna change it to examine if open. And let's just put your done in here. And there we go. So you can see right now, even when I'm off, the logic is true, even though it's not done, right? Because we got an examine if open. So let's download this. So we can see right now, since the done is not true, logic level is going to be high and our light's on. So if we press our green button, that will stay true until it's done and it will shut off the lights. So I'll let you see that again. Green button pressed, one, two, three, done, and in turn it shuts off the lights. So let's do that with the other instruction types now with the examine if open. Change it to the timer timing bit. You can see that the logic level is high, all right? Press my green button, and it's now timing, so now the logic level went low, and it's not timing again, it went on. So let's look at that again. So currently, the push button is not pressed, so the timer is not timing. So now, since we're using the examine if open, which is its opposite state, it's a high level here, the light is on. I'm gonna press the green push button, and now it will be timing, so the light should shut off. So it's timing, our light shut off, and when it stops timing, the light comes back on. And we'll do the final one, which is the enable. Now the enable bit, same thing, it's not high right now. So using the examine if open, this logic level is the opposite, so it'll be high. So I'm gonna depress the green push button, and since it is enabled, it goes low. And even though it gets done, it doesn't change it. So whenever we press the green button, the light will be off. When we let go of the green button, it'll be on. So it, I'm not pushing the green button right now. You can see the logic level is low. But when I press it, the light goes off. Okay, well, that's all I have on the timing on instruction. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and please don't forget to subscribe. Now I'm gonna create another video using your uh, timer off instruction. So that's this guy that's found right here. Anyways, thank you for joining me and we'll keep in touch, thanks.